No. Um, that was just a, like a single instance. Like if you want to optimize for dispersion, you're probably going to have to throw out some of the other stuff. There are like the the brightness number that the Gem Cut Studio will tell you, like that 80 percent, 85 percent, whatever. It's right. Is dependent. On, depend, yeah, it's it's exclusively straight on. Right. Um, it uses the ISO map, which you're never going to see in real life. So, if you want to optimize for a very bright stone, you can look at those little graphs and just, at a super quick glance, try to find whichever one looks the best, like or looks the brightest. But then you're still going to have to go in and make sure that like the contrast looks appropriate. Is it windowing? Things like that. Because you can get, just like the example that we saw here, if you're okay with a window, you can get a design in like fluorite or like, I don't know, fire ridge opal that, and all of those have terrible refractive indices, but you can get a design that has a window, but it's still really, really, really bright. And as long as you're okay having that small window, then you can totally achieve and get away with it. So short answer to your question, no, you don't always optimize for dispersion. If that's what you're looking for, throw away the other stuff. So Aria, <clears throat> this might be uh, an example of what you were talking about earlier, not to trust that, that graph. And it could be a little bit in the material as well, but I recently cut a spinel, absolute beautiful rough, very light colored lavender. Yep. Um, I had a design for it in the graph, um, and I know others can't see it, I wish they could, but it's amazing. Uh, we're talking like 97, 98%. Um, okay. Tilt windowing is just super low. Yeah. I mean, just from a performance perspective of the graph, it should turn out amazing. Yeah. But when I cut it, it looks really dark. It darkened it drastically. Yeah. Um, now, in some lights, like fluorescent, it's not bad. It looks like an amethyst, like a nice saturated amethyst. But, you know, so some of that might be the material, too. LEDs, it, it looks black almost. So what you're seeing is actually classic in zinc-bearing um, spinels. Mm. So any spinel that has a decent amount of zinc that has either that, like, grayish blue, grayish lavender, uh, grayish purple, they're going to be very, very aggressively lighting dependent. So there are certain fluorescent lights which will make those stones stand out ridiculously. If you take them outside, it's even so strong in some materials as to be latitude dependent. So I had a oh well yeah so like I had a purple spinel from Tanzania. I cut yep. it when I was living in Minnesota. Took it outside like decent. Took it inside under LED lights, pitch black. <laughs> I took it to Tucson. It was the brightest damn purple spinel I had ever seen, and it was the exact same stuff. Okay, wow. And the only thing that changed was latitude and time of year. So most likely what you're seeing is lighting dependence. Okay. Um, what you could do if you really wanted to is cut that same design in a white lab spinel and see how it does. Like that would be the best comparison. But what you'll probably find is that the design probably performs pretty close to what it was in Gem Studio. The stone's stone. not as bad as he's making them on either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I expected a lavender colored stone though, not, not yeah. you know, it's, a deep it's, amethyst look. It's like the, the same <laughs> problem that you have with like certain dark garnets or like certain dark trumpets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So it, at no point did you actually turn the colors along for the stone for the type of material. Right. When when do you do that or do you do that even? So GemCut Studio as of right now doesn't do a great job of modeling how much a stone will darken or lighten based off of light path length. And part of that, if you think about like a material in real life, let's say a, a red garment. The larger that red garnet is, if it's the same exact color, like the larger you manage to make it, the darker it's going to look because light's going to have to travel through the stone more. And basically, the longer that path is that the light travels in the stone, the more red it picks up and the darker it will become. In Gem Cut Studio, we have no way to say, hey, this stone is, we're like, render it if it looks like it at 8 millimeters, render it in 12 millimeters, render it in 20. So it doesn't know how long that light path is traveling. 
Like, let's say you've got a super tight red garnet, but it's like small. You test it out from Jet Cut Studio, it looks like it's going to be pretty bright. You cut it in real life, pretty bright. Let's say you have the exact same material, but now you've got like an 8 millimeter stone. You cut it, Jet Cut Studio is telling, it, telling you it's going to be bright, but you hit that critical point where the light is traveling just long enough in the stone to where it's black. If you're familiar with Usambara tourmaline, the same thing happens, but instead of turning black, it turns red. So this is a chrome tourmaline where if it's in small pieces, it's like dark, but it's green. Light travels through, it's green, it's green, it's green, green. As soon as you get above a certain size, it travels through the stone so much that a whole bunch of stuff gets absorbed and a whole bunch of stuff gets changed, and it ends up being dark red. And Gemcut Studio just doesn't have a good way to model that. Can so, you also select the number of bounces in Jamcut Studio? You can. Uh, it maxes out at 16. Uh, and that really the only reason this is even an option in Jamcut Studio is because some people's computers can't handle too much of that processing power. In real life, like the light's going to bounce however many times it wants to. Some light's going to bounce like it'll go in, it'll hit once, it'll hit twice, and it'll go straight out. Some designs, like uh, pairs, like the little tip of a pair, the reason that it looks so weird is because sunlight comes in, bounces like 40, 50 times, and then comes out. So if you cut like a pair in some light colored morganite, that tip, you're going to have some like super dark orange areas and some black areas. So that's how number bounces relates to that. Any other questions? Cool. I don't believe so. Thank you. Oh, question. Just uh, you know, give us like the like two to three most common like either mistakes or challenges that somebody like I'm not a computer guy. You know, Cal, he's a software guy. He, oh, blah blah blah. I was like, <laughs> you know, so for somebody that's just a mortal, uh, what are two or three things to either watch out challenges or problems people have? And. In what regard, like for optimizing designs, or just like just using Gemcut? Oh, just using Gemcut Studio. Yeah. All right, so that is a good question. Uh, I think the biggest ones are probably this example. Just because Gemcut Studio says something's going to look bad doesn't mean it will, and just because Gemcut Studio says something will look good doesn't mean it will in real life. So. All, all this is doing is just giving you some info. You still have to use like your knowledge of gems and like your knowledge of cutting to say, but do I really want to try that out? So that's like probably the number one thing. I think the number two thing is getting too obsessed with like certain numbers or making sure that the stone looks perfect in a certain set of conditions. So like, let's take this one for example. <coughs> so. Somebody sent me some Facebook messages about this design. They were like, but I want it to have a really specific effect. I want it to like look like this and look like this. And she ended up kind of like picking smaller and smaller intervals. So like right now, this window that we have changes things by a big range. Like these angle differences are like one degree, two degrees, three degrees, whatever. Big changes. And this person ended up getting kind of so lost in the weeds that they were like making angle changes that were like 0 0.03 degrees. <laughs> like there's no real difference between any of these. Like you can't tell the difference in real life. <laughs> so don't get lost in the weeds trying to like achieve one specific thing or like completely eliminate a window or like get rid of that one tiny area that doesn't look 100% perfect. Because in real life, your machine's not cutting like to the exact angle you're setting it. So the stone is like a, an object in real life. It's not some random computer stuff. So that's probably the two biggest ones. Um, all right, I did find, um, and I don't know if this is a glitch or the way um, uh, we're not using the software right. But sometimes when creating a design, and it's instead of using symmetry, you manually type in. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about? You manually type in your <laughs> indexes, yeah. and then when you hit, you know, cut, to, what is it, the jump, to jump to your meets, it overcuts them. Is that a glitch? I, honestly, I, I think it's a glitch. I don't know how to fix it, so I just basically stopped using that mode. 
and you just pull it okay there's some designs that I've had to do that for because I couldn't you know the symmetry wasn't there yeah but um so I just manually brought it in and visually you know hit the meet points but um yeah the yeah. jump feature would not work in those conditions I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be totally honest for those I'll actually switch back to jump cat <laughs> like okay. I'll, I'll save this as a jump cat file I'll open it in jump cat do whatever I want and then come back so a question um is there a function, I, I came in a little bit later, is there a function in the Jimcat Studio that will account for the darkening of the stone once you mount it in a piece of jewelry? You're not going to get light coming in from underneath the pavilion. It's going to come in from the sides of so, maybe the, the girdle, but... It's funny that you ask that, because that was one of, <laughs> one of the earliest things we talked about, is that Jimcat Studio's lighting model assumes that you've stuck your stone in, like, the worst bezel setting you've ever seen in your life. So this little picture down here, like in the bottom right of the screen, is actually what the stone would look like if there was no light coming in from the sides. When you set this stone in real life, in like a, if you set it in like a prom setting that's pretty elevated, it's going to look much better because there's going to be all that light coming in from the sides. But everything that Gem Cut Studio shows you is no light from the sides, no light from the bottom, no light from the girl. I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I know. <laughs> like, you'd think that they would tell you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Is the next version of Gemcat Studio going to accommodate? Yes. It will give you the option to switch back and forth between bezel mode and between free mode. So the Free mode is prong? Well, it's not just prong. It's like literally the stone is floating in the air. When is, do you have any idea when that's coming out? No idea. <laughs> uh, and Reg has not given me a solid estimate at all. All right, so I think that's it. Anybody has any? Oh, never mind. Yeah, so um, like where you're changing the uh, crown, so if you're happy with the pavilion, by yeah. just tweaking the crown can have a dramatic effect on the cell. Oh, absolutely. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this one. So this design right here is intended for like special effect. If you look at it, there's a whole bunch of dark areas, there's a whole bunch of windowing, but it kind of looks cool. It's like triangles and triangles and whatever. But let's look at changing the, just changing the crown. So we'll say, like, no changes to the pavilion. And let's say big changes to the crown. So when we're looking here, we're not changing the pavilion at all. But changes across the crown will give you very, very different looks for the stone. So yeah, uh, if you're happy with the pavilion and you want to just like play around with the crown a lot, you can get some really good <coughs> variants of your design. Uh, and it can substantially change how the, how the end appearance of the stone is. For some designs in low refractive index materials at window, small changes to the crown height and small changes to the table width, like tiny changes, like <coughs> 0.2 degrees, can also have a huge impact. So that's also another thing to check out. If you blow it and overcut like I have, <laughs> it's nice to be able to get the angles back from the new crown that you have to change the design to. So I think um, that's it for questions. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Aria. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Uh, stick around, guys. We're going to have a, our giveaway for the um, door.